All right, so Joe Biden and his administration has essentially been what I would like to refer to as exposed by More Perfect Union and Mr. Don Berwick, the person who led Medicare and Medicaid under the Obama administration. Take a look at this video from More Perfect Union. It's absolutely amazing, and then I'll give a brief discussion about it. President Biden doesn't need to wait for Congress to take aggressive action to lower prescription drug prices. I am a former administrator of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, and I'm familiar with tools that are available, powers that the administration has right now to reduce drug prices if we truly want to. I'm going to explain three concrete ways that the Biden administration can lower drug prices. First, benchmarking U.S. drug prices against prices in other countries. Back in 2018, President Trump proposed setting a most favored nation price for certain prescription drugs. That is to have Medicare pay the same price as people pay in other developed countries, which is generally a lot lower than we do. Specifically, Trump proposed an executive order under which CMS would use most favored nation prices for both Part B drugs, that are drugs that are used in hospitals or administered by physicians, and some Part D drugs, drugs that Medicare beneficiaries get in pharmacies. CMS narrowed that to a rule that would have applied initially to 50 Medicare Part B drugs, the ones administered in hospitals and physician offices, but even that narrower change would have saved the health system about $28 billion. Predictably, the pharmaceutical industry strongly opposed that order and Trump backed down. But the idea remains sound, and given its history, it's potentially bipartisan, and it does not require congressional action. It can be done just through rulemaking by the Department of Health and Human Services, or even easier now as a CMMI demonstration. The second idea isn't new at all, ordering the purchase and distribution of some important medications by the federal government. The federal government should exercise its authority to purchase medications in bulk and at lower prices for critical populations that lack access. This could include naloxone, which you might know by its brand name, Narcan, to address the overdose crisis now killing close to 100,000 Americans a year. It could include PrEP, pre-exposure prophylaxis medications to end the HIV epidemic. It could also include patented medications like hepatitis C treatments with high drug prices that are limiting access around the country. For patented medications, the government can first try to obtain a fair price. But if that doesn't work, it can use a 100-year-old statute, 28 U.S.C. Section 1498, that allows the government to manufacture or use patent-protected products for its own purposes without being blocked by the patent holder as long as it pays reasonable compensation. When a drug shortage or high prices prevent effective response to a public health crisis or put important, even life-saving medications out of reach for Americans, we should use Section 1498 authority, and that can be done under executive order. The main point is this. Americans should not die of treatable conditions just because drug companies jack up prices out of reach. Even the threat of expanding Section 1498 application would put downward pressure on pricing to the relief of many Americans. The third idea, importation of generic drugs, relies on the ability of the FDA to recognize a national drug shortage and to permit the importation of a drug from other nations in order to enhance access to care. This would be especially effective when it's applied to common generic drugs, which are easy to manufacture and easy to inspect. When there is insufficient competition related to generic drugs in the US, even drugs that have been used for centuries and traditionally priced low, essentially as commodities, can become the subject of price hikes due to pharmaceutical entrepreneurs who find themselves in sole control of the market and try to make out like bandits or restrict supply. The most famous case may be Daraprim, a life-saving treatment for toxoplasmosis for which the price soared from $13.50 per pill to $750 per pill in 2015 when Turing Pharmaceuticals under Martin Shkreli gained control of the drug. Valiant Pharmaceuticals did the same thing for the decades-old cardiovascular drugs Isoprel and Nitropress. The FDA has enforcement discretion when a needed drug is in short supply. It can declare a drug shortage and allow pharmacies and patients to buy that drug from non-U.S. sources. When critical generic drugs see outrageous price increases that de facto put those drugs out of reach or available only with great financial hardship for patients who have no other choice, that, for all intents and purposes, is a drug shortage, and the FDA has every right to declare it to be so. 
No congressional action is needed, just the appropriate administrative action by the FDA. U.S. prescription drug prices are more than 250% higher than in 32 other countries. Millions of American patients and families, as well as Medicare and Medicaid, carry that burden. Big changes are needed to fix that. But while Congress struggles to find a way, the administration has powerful tools at its disposal and it should use them. These executive actions won't just save money. By making it possible for more people to get the treatments they need, they'll save lives. Wow. Um, I, I love stuff like this. I love stuff like this, educational stuff like this that tells us what's really going on. Because I wasn't previously aware of this. I didn't know that the president of the United States had this kind of power through executive authority to do things like this. I had no idea, you know, because if you listen to these corrupt politicians, what they tell you, you know, you only get one side of the story, which is why I love it when we get this kind of information. So once again, that was Don Berwick, the guy who led Medicare and Medicaid under Obama. And he basically told us, hey, if Biden wants to tackle the uh, drug price issue, which is a big thing here in this country of America, he doesn't need Congress for that. He can do it simply through executive action. And he lined out three different ways that he could go about doing it. And I'll get into that in just a second. But what we've been having lately in these discussions, so they came out with $2.5 trillion infrastructure bill, which of course is no longer that amount. It's, I believe it's like $1.75 trillion. And they've stripped all the good policies out of it. One of the best policies, if not the best policy, was Medicare negotiating for lower drug prices for Americans. Completely stripped it out. At first it was gone. And then they brought it back in, but under the guise of, okay, well, it's a compromise on the compromise on the compromise. And so we're only going to negotiate for, like, I think it's like 10 specific drugs. And it's only a little bit. It's only going to be a little bit less. So they're spitting in your eye and they're saying, that's all you get. So take it. Well, that's not all you have to get. And that's what this video is to inform you of. So he goes through three different methods that Joe Biden himself, through executive authority, can go about lowering drug prices for Americans, which is something the Democrats have been promising for years and they've yet to do. Let's go through them very briefly. So the first one, and he doesn't need Congress to do any of this. Benchmarking U.S. drug prices against prices in other countries. And I love how he brought up, and I didn't even know this, so Trump actually tried to do this during his term. But as he pointed out, Big Pharma came up and they made a fuss about it, and Trump being the cuck that he was during his entire uh, uh, tenure as president, cucked to Big Pharma, just how he cucked to the military industrial complex and didn't pull us out of any of the wars that he said he was going to do, but that's an entirely different discussion. He cucked to Big Pharma and he did nothing on it. And this entire thing could have been done through executive order, and Biden can do that right now. The second one, Ordering the purchasing and distribution of some important medication by the federal government. Uh, the federal government can exercise its authority to purchase medication in bulk and for lower prices. This is absolutely amazing because, you know, our politicians, especially more conservative politicians and even Democratic politicians with this new neo, well, it's not new, but this neoliberal style of politics, they love to spin to you that not only is the government bad, but the government can't act on its own. It, it can't ever do that. In some instances, the government is vital and we need the government. And in my opinion, and I believe I'm right on this, the government should have everything to do with healthcare. Healthcare shouldn't be left to the private sector because that it's it, it, it allows for people to be price gouged and healthcare, something that should be guaranteed to everybody from the point of birth to the point of death, becomes a commodity. And, and it becomes something that, oh, well, We'll only serve you based upon how much you how much money you have in your pockets. And it's a profit motive. That's why it shouldn't be left to the private sector. And that's why the government should step in and have pretty much everything to do with nationalize everything in regards to health. That's what I think about it. So for patented under this one, for patented medication, the U.S. government can uh, try to negotiate for low drug prices. If that doesn't work, they can use a 100 year old statute. Twenty eight. USC section 1498, it allows the government to use patented drugs for its own purposes uh, without being blocked by the patented holder. And that can be done through executive order. And he points out in that video, just threatening to do this can force Big Pharma to lower drug prices. You don't even have to do it, just threaten to do it. Will Biden do it? I don't know. We'll see. Um, he needs to be prodded on this stuff. I mean, I don't do they even know that they can do this. 
Maybe, maybe not, but it needs to be brought to the forefront. And last, the third one is to allow drug importation. So uh, generic drugs that are easy to manufacture and inspect, Big Pharma, they price out the shit out of you on everything, even those kind of generic drugs. So um, what can be done is that the FDA can declare a drug shortage, which it is a drug shortage if Big Pharma is hiking up the prices of these drugs and people can't afford them. Yes, the people are short on drugs. And so the FDA, through its authority, can say, hey, there's a drug shortage and allow U.S. patents uh, or patients and pharmacies to purchase drugs from other countries for lower prices. The FDA can do that. Biden can do that through executive action. OK, and they can just call it a drug shortage because a drug shortage equals being price gouged and not being able to get your drugs that you need to sustain your life and to not go bankrupt. OK, they're making drugs out of reach to the people that need them the most. And the video uh, ends off by giving you a couple facts. The U.S. drug prices are over 250 percent higher than in 32 other countries. So this not only saves money, but it saves lives. Look, man, this is a black and white issue to me. Look, we're not going to get um, the kind of drug uh, price negotiation change that we need in that spending bill that they're currently either negotiating on or getting ready to pass. It's a it's a meager bill. It's been watered down. It's a shell of itself. It's not going to come in there. OK, if you do get something in there, it's going to be terribly um, inadequate and it's not going to be worth the paper that it's printed on. But what these so-called progressives can do if they have any bit of a spine left, which they don't seem to have, they can say, hey, look, Mr. Biden, if you want us to vote, to, it could be the people in the House or the Senate, whatever. If you want us to vote for your watered down, terrible spending bill, and if you want it to be passed, if this is indeed your agenda, well, then we want you to look at what you can do uh, through executive order to lower drug price for Americans. And until you do that, until you actually do it, I just look at it, we want you to do it. I can't vote for your spending bill. Sorry, your agenda is going to be upended. That's what these people should do. That's what they should do. And we should be calling on them to do that because this will save many, many lives.